All right, here we go, continuing with uh, chapter six. We've already learned about solving systems of equations by graphing to see where the two lines cross. And then in the last section, we learned about solving by substitution, where you solve one of the equations for a variable and plug it into the second equation. That way you can uh, get rid of one of the variables that way by substitution. So this method is called the elimination method, and it's an alternate way to eliminate one of your variables. So uh, first we'll do a couple of vocabs, and then of course lots of problem solving tips and some examples. So, the elimination is a method to solve a system of equations by combining the two equations in such a way that you eliminate a variable. And the way in which you're going to combine them is either adding or subtracting. So, I should have probably put this, but it's either add or subtract. Okay? Uh, the way that you're going to get one of the variables to cancel out is by making them match up. So, match up is a vocab word that I have created for you. Um, it's something I refer to a lot. I'll ask, do your variables match up? Or which variable matches up? Something like that. And so what matching up is, is when the x or y terms are the same value in two different equations. So let me let me give an example of this. If I have 3x plus 2y equals 8, and then I have um, 6x minus 2y equals negative 3. So I just have two equations like this. Um, the x coefficients are a 3 and a 6. They do not match up. They're not the same number. But the y coefficients, a positive 2 and a negative 2, they match up perfectly. And so if I were to combine these two equations together, this piece and this piece would actually cancel out, and that would eliminate the y variable, which make x uh, the only variable left, and solving for x would then become very easy. So to match up, the numerical value in front of the x's has to be the same as each other or the numerical value in front of the y's has to be the same as each other. It doesn't matter if they're both the same sign or one's positive and one's negative. Um, that will control whether you add the equations or subtract the equations. So if one's positive and one's negative, you add them together. If they're both positive, then you can subtract. So either way, it'll work out. All right, problem solving tips. This is a big list of steps, um, but note that most of these steps, the second half, is the same as the steps that you used for substitution. So the first thing you want to do is line up your equations so that the coefficients match up, right? That's the whole objective to this method, is getting the same coefficient in front of the x or the y. Now, if your equation does not start off already matched up, then you have to multiply the equations through by a constant to get the numbers you want. Um, so for example, if you have 2x plus 2y equals 6, and 4, let's say 4x uh, plus 10y equals 30. The 2 and the 4 do not match up. The 2 and the 10 do not match up. But if you took this entire equation here and you multiplied by 2, then you would have a 4x here, a 4y here, and a 12 right here. And so you can see by, by doing that, this will now match up, and then you could use the normal method. Okay. So the second step here is key if they don't match up, you have to force them to match up. And then every other step is going to be the same no matter what. Add or subtract the two equations to cancel out one of your variables. Solve the resulting single variable equation to get a number. And then plug that back in to the original equation to find the second variable. So all of these steps here are the same as substitution. Okay, It's only the first couple of setup steps that are going to be different. Notice that your answer is an ordered pair. Um, and the same you have the same things that could happen here which is if you if you plug it in and you solve and you get a true statement like say you're trying to solve it and you get 3 equals 3 okay then that means all solutions or um, let me say this all solutions or say you solve it and you get like 2 equals 5 okay that's never true so then your answer would be no solution so it's still possible you can have parallel lines or lines that are on top of each other, and so you'll either get all solutions or no solution, but most of the time the lines will cross at a single point. All right. Note two things. It doesn't matter which variable you go for first. It could be x or y. You can cancel out whichever one seems easier. And be extra careful with negative signs. So if you're subtracting the two equations, um, you got to make sure that you subtract everything properly, so just pay very close attention to your negative signs. All right, here we go. A couple of examples, and then we'll check in Desmos to see what they look like. In this first example, I look at my coefficients here, 3 and a 1. They do not match up. Then I look here, 4 and negative 4, those match up. 
and these numbers we don't care about in terms of if it's going to work or not. So these two equations I want to add together. So I'm going to take this left side and this left side and add them together. So 3x plus 1x is 4x. These cancel out. I got equals. 10 plus 2 is 12. And you might be asking, how is it mathematically legal? Like, is this the golden rule? Is this PEMDAS? How does this work? And the reason this works is, uh, even though you're adding a 2 on the right-hand side, and you're adding an x minus 4y on the left-hand side, we've said with this equation that x minus 4y and 2 are equal amounts. So you could kind of think of it like, on this side, I'm adding $2, and on this side, I'm adding 8 quarters, right? It looks different. It's an x minus 4y instead of a 2, but it has an equivalent value. And so as long as you're adding an equal amount of a value on the two sides, then you're following the golden rule. So by adding this stuff on the left, but this 2 on the right, I'm still technically following the golden rule because I'm adding equal amounts to both sides. Okay, so once you've eliminated one of your variables, you can solve for the other one. So divide by 4, divide by 4, and we get x equals 3. Once you have the first one, you plug it back into either equation. So I'll plug it into the first one. 3 times 3 plus 4y equals 10. So 3 times 3 is 9, so I can subtract 9 right there. And I could subtract 9 right there. And then I get 4y equals 1. So y equals 1 fourth. Divide both sides by 4. So now my x was 3 and my y was 1 fourth. So my answer is 3 comma 1 fourth. So remember we want to put our answer as a coordinate point. And you can plug this into the other equation to make sure that it works. 3 minus 4 times 1 fourth is 3 minus 1 which is 2. So easy to check and make sure it works. Uh, likewise over here. So we look at these coefficients. A 3 and a 5 do not match up. A negative 2 and a 10 do not match up. But I can multiply the equation by some number to make them match up. So 3 and 5 are difficult to match up because they don't go into each other evenly. But 2 and 10 are easy to match up. If I multiply this by 5, then these will match up. So I'm going to take this whole equation and I'm going to multiply it by 5, and then I'm going to rewrite whatever I get here. 5 times 3x is 15x. 5 times negative 2 is negative 10 with the y. And make sure you don't forget to multiply to the other side. 5 times negative 3 is negative 15. Okay, so now these two equations is my new system of equations, and I'm going to add them. Okay, 5x plus 15x is 20x. 10y and negative 10y cancel out. 40 minus 15 is 25. Divide both sides by 20. And I get x equals 25 over 20 is 1.25 or 5 fourths or 1 and a quarter, anything like that. Now, to get the y value, I can take this and plug it back into either place. So let me try plugging it in right here. 5 times x, which is 1.25, plus 10y equals 40. 5 times 1.25, uh, what's that going to be? That's going to be 6.25. So I can subtract 6.25 from this side. Subtract 6.25 from this side. Cancel out. 10y equals 40 minus 6.25 is 33.25. 7, 5, and then divide by 10, divide by 10, oopsie, 10, and I get y equals 3.375. So you can tell this is a kind of nasty decimal here. So my x was 1.25, and my y was 3.375. So my final answer is 1.25, comma, 3.375. You could also have done this using fractions. And then just to remind you that you can check these in Desmos. Um, let me show you what that would look like. So we go over here to Desmos, and let me launch the calculator. And let me type in these two equations, 3x plus 4y equals 10, and x minus 4y equals 2. Okay, and so I can see right here that the point where they cross is 3 comma 0.25 or 3 and 1 quarter, which is the answer for this one. And then let me shift it over and do the other one. 
So I can type in here this first equation, 3x minus 2y equals negative 3. And the next one, 5x plus 10y equals 40. Okay, and I can see where these guys cross. And it is 1.25, 3.375, just like we got. So it's a confirmation that we did these correct. And of course, you can also um, you can also look at um, these equations and kind of visualize if you would have converted them to slope-intercept form, what would they look like? You know, if I subtract 3x to the other side and then I divide by negative 2, you can kind of see would it be a positive slope or a negative slope? Are they going to intersect? Are they going to be parallel? That kind of stuff to kind of match your intuition here for where these cross. So that's it for this video. Um, I hope it makes sense. I hope you can see the relationship between this method and the previous method we learned substitution and tie both of these methods, which are algebraic solutions, back into the idea of really seeing a graph and understanding that the solution to a system of equations is the point where the two lines cross because it's a single point that satisfies both conditions. And remember, last thing I'll say here is that even though we're solving these in kind of an abstract way with just x's and y's, the real world value to these kind of equations is going to be in word problems and that's something that's going to come up in the next section is using uh, systems of equations to set up and solve word problems that have real value or real meaning in your life. Alright, that's it. See you in class.